Hey everyone, in a previous video for knowledge tree, we have generated knowledge trees based on an original topic along with the JSON file, which is then displayed on HTML. For example, here, here was one for online marketing. Each one of these topics were populated for related topics and each one of the related topics underneath were populated for even more so related topics, but we could do it only up to a depth of three because it was becoming too expensive. So in this newer project, we are actually going to do a deeper knowledge tree extraction. Let's run the script and see the best way to understand it is to see it. So when we run the script, we get a topic you want to explore. We can type in anything here, but let's start with online marketing. Then we are going to get and or so many topics about that and then we'll be able to we we will write them to a json file plus we will be able to see them in the html this html is powered by this json file now the extension i'm using to be able to see the html right in the browser is actually live preview this one if you have this extension installed then and you're in an html file you can just click this icon right here it says show preview and it'll pop up but okay, so now we get to see all the uh, topics generated under online uh, marketing, but we can actually select one. For example, let's say, let's select number three, which is content marketing. And then it's going to generate even more so topics. And then this shiver topics here have additional topics inside of it. It's going to be more colored uh, as green. Now we can actually go deeper into this. Let's select the measurement and analytics, which is number six on our list. And when we do that, we're going to get additional content related to that. We do have to refresh the page and go back in. Here we see uh, more detailed topics related to that. Let's maybe we want to learn more about KPI measurement. We can select three and go deeper into that. And once we get back there, uh, KPI measurement, we get all kinds of related topics about that. We can also type in up and go back up to a uh, previous level. We can actually do that again. And maybe this time we want to select maybe content calendar, which is number 11. We can do that. And then once we refresh the page, we'll see that content marketing. This is still under content marketing. And you see that content curation is, okay, I accidentally selected content curation, but content curation now has been populated, as well as uh, all these topics are in the JSON file as well. We're going to be reviewing the code files uh, for this in this video but if you want to learn more about how i did the other automated knowledge tree extraction just watch this video project files for both of them will be available a page can find the link to it in the knowledge tree extraction and also uh, for this newer one deeper knowledge tree in the description in the video and if you're also enjoying my videos you can find more of it at my website echohive.live along with code download links for uh, my patrons and one more thing before we start reviewing the code, we can actually uh, type in exit. And when we do that, the entire content that we have generated is copied to a new folder called online marketing along with the JSON file. And uh, then you can rerun the script, uh, actually ask for uh, something completely different like quantum physics, for example. And then now uh, you'll, you'll be able to explore a different knowledge tree in depth. So you can see with the exact same method that we have used. Uh, the beauty of this is that you can go as deep into a concept as you like, as the previous one was limited due to it becoming more expensive at certain depths. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours over three projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. To achieve this, we have about three files that are necessary. A basic called our Pi file, which handles our OpenAI API call, index.html, which we are going to use to display it as a web page. The knowledge extracted manual.py, which actually uh, does all the generation process and the requirements for this is OpenAI and term color. Let's start with the basic.callPy. We are here just defining a function, which is going to take in a system message, user prompt, and we can set streaming to true or not. 
because here we are seeing the, the JSON. We are running this in JSON mode, so we, we see that it's being streamed. If you already set false, you won't see it, and only see, get to see the uh, list of items that were generated. So this is just a standard call to GPT-4 Omni, and, and we loop over the response chunks and then append it to a system response empty string. We print it if stream is true, and at the end of the function, we just return a JSON.loads of assistant response, so we can have it as a dictionary, and at the end here, we can run it as a, a test as well. But what we really want to do is we want to import the stream GP4 response function from basic, uh, basic underscore call into knowledge extracted manual. And then we do our other necessary imports. Shuttle is to move the files to its final folder when we are all done with it. We, if we, if we already have a JSON.response file, we pretty much remove it in the beginning of the script. So every time you run the script, it's a new beginning, so to speak. System message is, you are a helpful assistant. Please return your response as a JSON object. Please use the following format. List of topics, and then a list of topics is, is the example, and we do say that no nested list. And then the next step is uh, get topics, which is just going to take in a system message and user prompt and call the stream GPT-4 response with those, and then get the list of topics and return it. Sanitize file name is actually going to use the original user input and turn it into some kind of proper name, so we can actually create a, a folder. Update JSON file is going to actually first create a create the final responses.json file if it doesn't exist. Uh, otherwise, it's going to read plus onto it and json.dump it. And this is our main function. While true, we are going to take a user topic into the topic you want to explore. And then we take a user topic and then we uh, equ equate it to user prompt as well. This user topic is what we are going to use to save, create the folder, I believe. Uh, and collected topics is going to be a dictionary with topics and subtopics. We set the all topics, set the all topics set, and then we start with a current level. Uh, and current level is the collected topics subtopic that's going to represent our current level. And we also have a level stack list, and we enter another while loop under this. And if we don't have a current level, then we are going to get topics based on the user prompt, and we are going to update all the topics, and we're going to extend the current level with those topics and subtopics, and we're going to update the JSON file. Otherwise, we are going to uh, just use all the topics in the current level, and then uh, we are going to use a print statement, print all the topics as we have done down here, and ask the user to make a selection. The user selection can also include up or a number, any number that this corresponds to one of the concepts. Or if you say up, then we, if we have a level stack, then we current level and user prompt, we just pop that level stack. So this is like a temporary holder of our levels. And then if we are at the, we don't have a level stack, which means we are already at the top level, we're going to print this and continue. Next up, we make sure that the user, what the user has entered, other than if they have entered up, is a, a integer. Otherwise, we ask for enter a valid number. Then we pick that topic, and we find the particular selected topics, and we find the selected top that selected topics dictionary because it's going to have sub topics, right? And then we craft a new prompt to as we we are going to use this user message, asking it tell me more about whatever the topic was selected, like for example quantum entanglement. But we do additionally say do not include the topics we already have, and we list all the topics that we have already generated. This was also the reason why the uh, previous video was becoming too expensive beyond the depth level of three, because not only we are making increasingly exponential uh, parallel API calls in the previous video, but also the tokens we were sending were increasing exponentially as well. If you watch that video, uh, you'll see it's, it's really the shows you how uh, recursive exponentials can get out of shape real quickly. But then we get the subtopics based on the, the, our original system message and then the new prompt, which we have crafted. And then uh, we pretty much append it to our selected topics list and to the level stack. And then we pick our current level. And then we change the user prompt to new prompt and update the uh, JSON file. We sanitize the query from user topic. And then we create an output folder from the sanitized query and then create a directory. This only will only happen if the user has selected exit up here 
somewhere either here or right here if the user exists and we get to this point and then we create this directory and then copy all the files and that's about it let's take a look at the html as well this is standard html that just is powered by uh, javascript which gets its information from the final responses.json we are using tailwind here we have the title generated topics in h1 and the collapse all button which collapses uh, all the all of the knowledge tree if you it doesn't matter what depth you're in and then we have a topics container which is just going to kind of contain all the topics we have a function to fetch the topics from a json file and then here we are creating the topic elements with the header topic title toggle button toggle button is going to expand or collapse it and subtopics container and now we recursively create the sub elements if they exist. This is happening from the information received from the JSON file. Toggling visibility of subtopics on a header click, because you can also just click on the header as well, like each topic that is. And then we display all the topics. And then collapse all topics function is going to be powering this collapse all button essentially. And then we just add an event listener to that collapse all to call that function whenever this is clicked. So this is it. I uh, hope you enjoy this project. So this is really interesting. Maybe I'll make a video comparing the two and we'll do more experiments, but this works really well. It allows you to explore certain topics uh, in depth. Let's go ahead and maybe select Heisenberg's uncertainty principle here. And since we are actually giving all the previous topics we have generated, we actually get to have really detailed and unrelated and more detailed topics about that. So that's you know, it doesn't generate descriptions, but you can always ask ChatGPT about any one of these, like Robertson Schrodinger relation, Kennard principle. Let's go ahead and select Kennard principle, for example, which something which I've never heard of. Then uh, actually, we do get only Kennard principle in return. So I guess uh, there is no more looking into that. But I guess we can go up in this case and look at nine Robertson Schrodinger relation. And that seems to have more things in it. As you can see, the quantum harmonic oscillator, quantum state tomography. So it just keeps, uh, you know, it just allows you to explore a topic in depth, not without, ex not without, ex without explanations, but by pointing you in the directions which you may want to go. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours over three projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.